Welcome to this session of Relational Database Management System. My name is Ashish Jain. I'm an assistant professor at the Department of Computer Applications at the Bhopal School of Social Sciences. Today we have the session number four in which we'll be dealing with more topics on data model. In the previous session, I have discussed about what is data model, what are the various types of data models, classification of different data models. We have seen hierarchical data model as well as network data model. So in this module, we would be looking at what are the various standard DBMS concepts that we should know. Uh, we will start with entity relationship data model. We will see relational data model, semantic and object oriented data model, and we will see no SQL data model. So let's begin this session. There are some standard DBMS terms which one should know in order to proceed further. The first term is called schema. Schema is basically a design of DBMS. So we can define schema as it is a conceptual organization of the entire database as viewed by the database administrator. We have a sophisticated user or the super user who is known as database administrator who is responsible for overall management of the DBMS. For him, the design of DBMS is called as schema. It simply means design or the structure of the database. Then we have subschema. Subschema is the portion of the database seen by the application programs that produce the desired information from the data within the database. It means that it doesn't give you the whole data or the whole details of whatever information is stored in your DBMS, but it will give you only the essential information required by any user so that you have a small part to be shown to you. This is called a subschema or the part of a schema. Then we have data definition language. The DBA is responsible for designing the database. For this, he make use of SQL language, that is the structured query language in designing the various data forms that we use, especially the tables. So this data definition language has some commands that helps DBA to enable to define different schema components. Then we have data manipulation language. It is also a part of SQL language structure. So it allows users to process, manage data to get the desired information. The main purpose of doing or having a DBMS is to store data for the purpose of its analysis so that after the processing of data, you get the desired information. For this, for the manipulation of data, we require data manipulation language commands. Now we start with the entity relationship model, that is the ER model. This model provides a graphical representation of all the entities and the relationships they have in a DBMS system. It is also called ERD, that is entity relationship diagram. Let us understand the concepts of ER diagram further. An ER model is based on the notion of the real world entities and their relationships. What is an entity? An entity is any real world object for which we need to store the data. For example, we want to store the data about a student. So to know student, we don't have any one single value. A student is composed of many values such as its enrollment number, name, class, section, and all sorts of information we have, right? Together, they will give the detail of one particular student. So we have student as a real world entity. There may be another entity called teacher. Teacher is identified by an employee number, teacher name or a department and any other information related to teachers. Now, how do these two entities are related to each other? This is called a relationship. Here, the basic relationship between a teacher and a student is that teacher teaches a student, right? So this teaches is a relationship. We will see further how we represent relationship as well as entities in an ER diagram. So there are two important aspects we should look out for anything in ER diagrams. The first one is entity and their attributes. Second one is relationship among the entities. So here, an entity is a real world object for which we represent various values related to an entity through some properties, they are called attributes. So we can say that an entity has real world property called the attributes and all the attributes are defined by a set of values, they are called domains. For example, if in a college there are five courses, so if a student is admitted to a college, it belongs to any of these five courses, right? So the value of the courses field would only contain all those courses that are being run in that particular institute. So we can say that this is called domain of this field course. 
right? So domain is a set of allowed values in a column. For example, we can say in a university, we have students and the student is an entity because it's a real world object or an value. Here, university is a database and name, age, etc. are the properties of the student. So they are called attributes and the relationship among entities defines the logical association between them. Now to represent various real life entities in terms of ER relation or ER diagram, we have certain rules or certain construct that we use to construct the ER diagram. These are the various construct that we use to represent any entity, we use a rectangle. So if a student is any entity, we represent student with a rectangle. All the relationships between the different entities are done using the relationship. Then all the properties by which we identify different entities they come under the attributes. So we represent attributes by an oval symbol or you can say eclipses. Then weak entity, weak entity relationship, we leave it aside for now. But just to give you an idea, weak entity is such an entity in which we don't have such a field that we can clearly distinguish between different records having the same value. So we represent it using double uh, rectangles. Then we have weak entity relationship. It is the relationship among two weak entities. So we represent it with double diamond signs. Then we have multi-valued attributes. Normally in a DBMS, what we want, we want to have a single value in a single column if we represent something in a table, right? So if a person has a two or three phone numbers, then this for the one phone number field, we can have multiple values. So to represent this graphically, we use a multi-valued attribute symbol, which is double eclipses. This indicates that this field is a multi-value field. Then we have a key field attribute. This is very important. Here, key field means that we uh, there is certain fields, the value of which is unique for every record so that we can identify between two distinguished, uh, we can distinguish two different uh, entities of the same type. Like for example, uh, student name can be common. We have student address can be common. Even father's name can be common. But how do you distinguish between two different students? Every student has a unique enrollment number, right? So this unique field is used to identify if we have multiple com common elements between the values of various fields in student table, right? So this is called a key attribute and we highlight or we underline this key attribute that to show that this is this one is the key value. So it is represented by putting a dash under the name of that particular value. Now there are certain attributes that can be formed by combining the values of two or more attributes together. For example, a name can be comprised of first name, middle name and last name. So we can have this it is, this is known as a composite attribute. So we can combine first name and last name to come up with the name field, right? So to represent this, it, it we use the symbol to represent that this is a composite attribute. Now let us look at an example. This is a very basic example. Here, if you look at this diagram, we have the student and we have the course. This student and code, they two both are the real world entities. So they are represented using rectangles. This student is identified by different properties or attributes which can be student number or name or major subject or address. So these are represented using the attribute symbol which is an oval shape, right? They all are connected to this entity student. Then we have course which is another entity. Course is having different properties such as section or teacher. So we have these attributes attached to this entity. Now there is a relationship between the entity student as well as the entity course. What is the relationship? The relationship is enrolled in. A student enrolls in a particular course, right? So we have an association which is a relationship and it is represented using this diamond symbol, okay? Here are some advantages of ER model. It is visually good to see a model and understand the various association among the different parts. It is a visual modeling yields conceptual simplicity. You get a better idea of which all values are connected to others, right? Then it is a very effective communication tool. It is very easy to understand an ER model because visual representation is much better than a normal textual representation. It is integrated with the dominant relational model. 
our next topic is a relation model. So to form a relational model, in relation model, we make use of tables to represent data. To construct relational model, we make use of ER modeling, right? Then we have some limitations of ER modeling, such as it has a limited constraint representation. You cannot represent everything in an ER model because otherwise the model will be too complex to understand. So there are certain limitations in representation. Also, a limited relationship representation is there. You cannot represent all the relationships that exist among various entities, especially if you have number of entities in a relation model. No data manipulation language. In ER modeling, it is just a diagrammatic representation. So there is no way you can process data using this model. It is just to understand the fundamental concepts as well as understand the relationship between different entities. Also, loss of information content occurs when the attributes are removed from entities to avoid crowded displays. If you have say 15 column table and you want to represent this as an ER diagram, so there are so many attributes that you draw. But to retain certain important attributes, you have to skip or you have to omit certain attributes that might lead to loss of information if you go, go in for the relationship. So this is a limitation. Now to now, the next and the most important model that we use is relational data model. A relational data model is the most popular model and it is the most extensively used data model. In DBMS terms, relation means table. So if you represent data in a tabular manner, this model of data is known as relational data model. And most of the times, the database that we use to see and work with has tabular representation of data. So in a sense, we use the relational data model. This model has the values that are stored in tables and the storing is called relation. And also, we use a term called normalization, which we will be looking at the subsequent uh, modules in this session. So all the values that are in a particular column are atomic means single. So generally what we want, we want that one particular column of a table contains only one type of values and that to one value per, val per field. Here, each row in a relation contains some related values and this is called a tuple. That means one full row of data in a table is known as a tuple. Each column of the table contains value from the same domain. That means the set of allowed values in that column and this is called attribute. Then the, it is based on the relation or table, which is a matrix of intersecting tuples and attributes. What is a table? Table is a, a representation in which we use column and row way of representing data. Column represents different properties or attributes and row is the value of those attributes at a particular moment. It describes a precise set of data manipulation constructs so that we can easily find whatever information we are searching for. Here, this is a diagrammatic representation of for understanding the relational model constructs. We have a table and in relational model, table is called a relation. So we have a student relation or we can say a student table. Here, this table contains various columns such as roll number, we have name, we have department. All these columns are called, are called attributes, right? And the student is an entity. So, Every entity is represented by a table in the name of that entity. So we have an entity student. So we have the name of this relation as student. Here we have different columns. So roll number, name and department. Here roll number is different for every student. That means this roll number is our key field, right? Then different rows are there and we have values in different columns. If we take the example as 265, this 265 has the name Johnson and the department as finance. So this one full row is called a tuple. That means it is a record of one student whose name is Johnson. Here we have different fields such as roll number, name and department which have different values and in one particular cell, cell is an intersection of a row and a column. So in one cell like we have Davis in the, uh, in the name column. So this contain only one value, right? This is called atomic representation of data. So in this way, we represent any value, any real world entity in terms of relation or a table. Now we come to object oriented data model. 
object oriented data model is one of the developed data model that we are using nowadays for complex data modeling and this can hold other types of values apart from normal text so we, we they are generally used to store multimedia data which contains audio video and also the graphic files it consists of pieces of data and various methods which are uh, the dbms instruction which helps them to store the data different concepts in this object oriented model the first is called object so what is an object object contains data and their relationship with operations that are performed on it it contains the basic building block for autonomous structure it provides an abstraction of the real world entity if you are familiar with the object oriented concepts we have in object oriented languages it is just like that then we have attributes we also have attribute in this so attributes describe the properties of different objects then we have a class what is a class class is a group which is a group of selected or we can say that similar objects right so collection of similar objects with the sh with shared structure and behavior organized in a class hierarchy is there let us see this uh, basic description of it we have a diagram here we have i shape that is the name of a bigger class in which we have a method or a function called paint now here we have this different objects that of the same class we have the line object we have the circle and we have a shape list okay the line object has points starting of the line ending of the line the color of the line and also it uses the paint function as defined in the previous class this is a concept of inheritance we can say so we have circle which contains center point color radius and also the paint method here we have a c point which is in which center point a line is also having a center point as well as we have the circle that also have a center point right so it has coordinates x and y so we have the values of x and y here so this type of representation is called object oriented representation and in terms of data modeling if we use it we follow object oriented data model concepts let us see the advantages of object oriented data model here the object oriented data model allows to add semantic content semantic means logic so some kind of logical association can be represented using this object oriented model which is not possible in other models it also provides you a visual representation of the semantic contents for better understanding also since it follow object oriented concept it allows you to have inheritance in data that allows proper integrity there are some limitations of this model as well the slow development of standards cause vendors to supply their own enhancements so there are different versions available for this model there is no generalized model available also it compromise widely on the accepted standard so there is no proper guidelines of defining and using this model it has a very complex navigational systems because we have so many interrelations among different entities here and also the learning curve is steep high system overheads and slow transactions so these are some limitations of object oriented data model then we come to big data nowadays there is a buzzword called big data so let us understand what actually is this big data big data refers to the data sets that are too large or complex to be dealt by the traditional data processing systems and it is used to mine for information in machine learning applications predictive modeling and also in other advanced data analytics applications as time grows and our data grows there is a need to have such a system which can easily and very efficiently help us to manage that information this information is very large for any traditional dbms software to handle right for this we require this concept what are the aims of the big data the aims of big data is to find new and better ways to manage large amounts of web as well as other sensor generated data that generates a lot of information in a fraction of seconds right so you require a special kind of mechanism to handle this thing it also provide high performance and also scalability as per your requirement you can scale your model scale your project and also to provide all this at a reasonable cost what are the technologies that we use for big data hadoop hdfs map reduce and no sql model in big data we have certain v's to look about these include validity variability 
venue, vocabulary, vagueness, value, veracity, variety, velocity and volume. Let us see them one by one. We begin with the volume. Volume means the size of data. Big data comprises of very large amounts of data that is generated and it is to be stored and processed. So, volume is to be looked for. Then we have velocity, the speed at which this data is generating. Nowadays, there are lot many progress in the field of sensor technologies and constantly we are doing some kind of sensor work. Also, uh, the kind of transactions that we have in e-commerce. So, in a fraction of seconds, millions of transactions are there which generate a lot of data. For example, in terms of WhatsApp or your social media regarding Facebook and Instagram, so many information, Twitter analysis is, is there. So, it generates a lot of data which is to be analyzed in a very short amount of time. So, the speed at which this kind of data is being generated is too large. This is called velocity. Then we have variety. There is a different variety of data that is generated, be it transactional data, logs, we have server records, then we have the data from the sensors, we have so many connected IoT devices that do generate a lot of data. Then all these data is to be used for proper analysis. That's why it's a very different type of data is there. Then veracity. Veracity means the accuracy of data. We have to be very sure that whatever we are storing, the accuracy of data is of very good. Then we have value. This data is not significant. This data is very significant. It has usefulness because you analyze the logs by which you know certain traits like you develop certain trend analysis, uh, what kind of likings is there for the user, especially the social media analysis. We, we can draw many conclusions out of it and this data can be shared with marketing and other companies so that target marketing and advertising can be done. It's a big business. Then we have validity. The data quantity is very important here. Also, there are certain data from government and other agencies that is to be used for your purpose. So, this is validity. Then variability, the dynamic evolving behavior in data sources constitutes this variability. We have venue. Now, it is not one particular source from which the data is generated. We have multiple sources of handling and generating this data. So, venue is related to that. Then vocabulary, there are different data models, different kind of semantics and different data structures used that makes up the vocabulary of the big data. Then vagueness, there may be confusion over the meaning of big data and the tools used. This is called vaguenesses, but we have to combine all the data together to have a better perspective and better analysis. So, how do you obtain different uh, big data from different sources? Suppose we have archive data that comprises of scanned versions of statements and forms documents basically. We have internal documents in different formats that are generated. We have multimedia files that have large size and these, these are digital files, pictures, videos, text, etc. We have operational and analytical databases data which, uh, which is also very voluminous in nature. We have machine log data. These are, these are the details uh, of the logs that are generated in different machines that are like servers and other things. So, we have to have a proper analysis of that. We have social media data which is in itself a very large amount of data that is generated. Then we have sensor data. Apart from this, we have public web resources such as government data and, and other things. So, we use a NoSQL model. Now, we come to NoSQL model. It comprises of document store, a key value store method, wide column store method and a graph store method. This no SQL model is not based on relational model. It supports distributed database structures in which all the information is not stored at the one place, but it is distributed or scattered over other. It provides high scalability, high availability and fault tolerance. Because our data is distributed, if one node fails, our data access cannot be stopped. We can have it from other sources. They are all connected so that we have a proper backup of everything. It supports large amount of sparse data. And also this is, uh, it is geared toward the performance rather than transaction consistency. So if you want good performance in your analysis, we will use a NoSQL model. These are some of the advantages of NoSQL model. It has high scalability, 
availability, fault tolerance. It uses low cost commodity hardware. It does not require any specialized hardware for this. A normal system can be used. It supports big data. This is the major advantage of this that this no SQL model supports big data. That's why it is frequently used for maintaining the big data. The key value model improves the storage efficiency. Key value is just, is just like indexing using an index value so that very easily you can search and find things in that. But it has some limitations such as it requires complex programming. There is also no relationship support. There is no transaction integrity. In terms of data consistency, it provides a very consistent model. Let us see a comparison between hierarchical, network and relational data model. Here, in terms of different points, we have clearly uh, compared these three models. Relationship, on the basis of the relationship they follow, we have one-to-one -one or one-to-many in hierarchical. In network, we have many-to-many. -many. In relational, we have one-to-one, one-to-many and also many-to-many. -many. Then in terms of structure, it, since hierarchical follows a tree-like structure, so we have a parent-child relationship. In network model also, we have a many parents and many children. But in relation model, it, it is based on relational data structure, which is not a tree-like structure. So in terms of data manipulation, note any independent standalone query interfaces there. But network model uses some kind of codacil uh, methods and relational uses SQL. SQL is very good and a very easy way to query the database. But they do suffer from insertion, deletion, and updation anomalies. You can see here clearly. And how do they handle hierarchy? In this model, in the hierarchical model, to store data, hierarchical method is used. It is oldest method, but not used today. In network model, it organizes the records to one another through links or pointers, which is also a complex way to represent. And in relation model, it is using the tabular method, which is very easy to understand and maintain. The applications, these are the given applications of these. Kindly go through this. Let us look back what we have covered in this module. We have started with entity relationship model. We have seen relational data model. We have seen the object oriented data model. We have seen no SQL model. And we have also seen comparison among hierarchical network and relation model. I hope this is beneficial for you. Till then, keep learning. Thank you.